Hey guys, welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Hope you're doing well wherever you are and you're ready for another benchmark video because today I have a good one for you. With all the recent gaming benchmarks comparing the 8th Gen Core series from Intel to AMD's Ryzen CPUs, many of you have been asking me to compare some older CPUs. In particular, there's been a huge amount of requests for a 4th Gen Core i7 versus 8th Gen Core i7 test. So I thought, hey, that's a pretty good idea. Let's do that. So today we're comparing the Core i7-4770K to the new Core i7-8700K in a range of games. But before we get to the results, here are a few notes. There are two unlocked 4th Gen Core i7 processors, the 4770K and the 4790K. They are essentially the same CPU and both are based on the same Haswell architecture. The 4770K was released in mid-2013, but with nothing new ready a year later, and virtually no competition from AMD, Intel just simply refreshed Haswell by essentially overclocking it and releasing a new range of chipsets. The result for the flagship line was the updated 4790K sporting a 500MHz overclock, taking it from a base frequency of 3.5GHz to 4GHz. Since I am testing both stock and overclock performance, I decided to go with the 4770K, as that really is a worst case scenario. If you happen to own either the 4770K or the 4790K, this video should give you a good idea of the gains you'd expect when upgrading to the newly released Core i7-8700K. Actually, the benchmark results should also be quite useful for Haswell Core i5 owners who are considering buying a second-hand Core i7 or just biting the bullet and getting a new 8th gen processor which of course also means upgrading their motherboard and memory. Apart from the small IPC gains Intel's made over the past four years, along with the additional 50% cores and threads, the other big advantage the 8700K enjoys is its support for faster, higher clocked DDR4 memory. Speaking of which, the 4770K will be tested with DDR3-2400 memory, and that affords it a memory bandwidth of around 29 gigabytes per second. The 8700K, on the other hand, will be using DDR4-3200 memory, and this allows for a bandwidth of about 42 gigabytes per second, providing with roughly 45% more bandwidth. Anyway, there are loads of benchmark results to look at and discuss, but before we do, today's benchmark video has been sponsored by Storyblocks. Storyblocks is an easy, practical way to get quality images for your website, social media, videos and so on. Get all the stock images you can imagine from Storyblocks, including high quality photos, vectors, icons and more. Download any of the 400,000 images in their member library and save 60% on marketplace content. All content is royalty free so it's yours to keep and use forever, whether it be for personal or commercial use. For example, do you need a photo of an IT guy that looks like he's in over his head? Not a problem. What about an IT guy that's one with his surroundings? Also not a problem. And what about an accountant that's trying to fix an IT related issue? You guessed it, also not a problem. We're giving away seven free days so you can try it out and access a massive variety of high res photos, vectors and more from Storyblocks. Go to storyblocks.com slash YouTube or click the link in the video description to get set up and start downloading today. Big thanks to Storyblocks for supporting our work and of course you guys for also being very supportive. All right, let's get to the benchmarks. First up, we have the very CPU demanding ashes of the Singularity. And for this test, we're using the DirectX 12 API with the GTX 1080 Ti. The resolution has been set at 1080p, and this is the same resolution I'll be using for all the testing in this video, while ashes of the Singularity has been tested with the high quality preset. Here we see that prior to any overclocking, the 4770K is able to outclass the 7600K, though it was 14% slower than the 7700K. Quite surprisingly, overclocking had little impact on performance, and even at 4.6GHz, the 4770K was 25% slower than the 8700K. So unsurprisingly, in a game that can utilise the 8700K's extra cores, it does enjoy a decent performance advantage. Ashes of the Singularity is one of the few games out right now that takes advantage of processes with more than 8 threads on offer, so I don't expect to see this kind of margin in many, or if any of the other games that I've tested with. Moving on, we have the Battlefield 1 results, and with that we have another CPU demanding title. As you can see, the 7600K gets hit really hard for the 1% low result, dropping down to just 79 FPS, and while that's still a high frame rate, the 4770K at its stock 3.5GHz operating frequency was much faster at 96 frames per second. Once overclocked, the 4770K managed a minimum of 113 FPS, which placed it on par with the 7700K. 
However, the faster DDR4 memory allowed the 7700K at times to push the 1080 Ti to higher frame rates and therefore it achieved a higher average frame rate. The 8700K wasn't much faster compared to the overclock 4770K. It was just 12% faster for the minimum frame rate, though it was 18% faster for the average. I should also note the frame rate cap in the game was removed for this test, so we are seeing the limits of the 1080 Ti here. Next up we have the Dawn of War 3 results, and here the stock 4770K looks particularly weak, though again I should note that it did only dip down to 59 FPS and was able to deliver a very smooth playable performance. A perfectly smooth playable performance in fact. Overclocked though, it did look much more respectable and it now was at least on par with the Core i5-8400. When compared to the overclocked 4770K, the 8700K was 17% faster for the minimum result and 11% for the average. 17% certainly sounds like a decent margin, but again, going from 116 FPS to 129 FPS isn't a noticeable gain in this title. Even the difference between dipping to 71 FPS opposed to 83 FPS isn't noticeable, or at least it wasn't in my opinion. Recently I tested many of these CPUs in Dawn of War 3 using Vega 64 liquid cooled, so I thought as a bonus I'd add the 4770K to those results as well. I'm yet to test all the Ryzen CPUs with the GTX 1080 Ti, so for those wanting to know how the 4770K stacks up to say the 1600X, this will give you a pretty good idea. Here we can see with a slower graphics card, the overclocked 4770K is able to match the 7700K and isn't a great deal slower than the 8700K. It has to be said, Vega actually does quite poorly in this title. For example, Vega 64 liquid cooled isn't much faster than Vega 56, and therefore both are very similar to the GTX 1070. For this test, that's kind of a good thing though, as it shows that for those using something like Vega 56 or a GTX 1070, there really isn't much to be had by upgrading to the 8700K from the 4770K, especially if you're happy overclocking, and I'll talk more about this a bit later on. Moving on, we have the Deus Ex Mankind Divider results using the DirectX 12 API, and again, the stock 4770K looks a little slow. In fact, even once overclocked, it's only just able to edge out the Core i5-7600K, and this meant that the 7700K was 25% faster when comparing the minimum frame rate. That said, the 7700K along with the 8700K hit a GPU bottleneck, and therefore, those gaming at 1440p with the GTX 1080 Ti will likely see no difference between the 4770K and the 8700K, for example, so keep that in mind. With Dirt 4, we see fairly consistent 1% low results with the GTX 1080 Ti across all CPUs tested. So although the 8700K allowed for an average of 196 FPS, this meant that it was still just 8% faster when compared to the overclocked 4770K for the average frame rate, just 6% faster for the minimum. Since even the stock 4770K maintained over 100 FPS at all times, it's fair to say even for high refresh rate gamers, the 8700K offers little to nothing over the 4th gen Core i7, at least in this title. 2017's most optimised and consumer-friendly title, Assassin's Creed Origins, has been included in the list of games tested. With more security than the US president, this game eats up threads, and yet despite that, the 4770K isn't much faster than the higher clocked 7600K. Overclocking the 4770K only boosts the performance by 10%. I suspect once again we're probably memory limited. Still, when looking at the minimum result, the 8700K was just 8% faster than the overclocked 4770K, so it's hardly going to be a noticeable margin. Moving on, we have Project Cars 2, and this is a fairly CPU demanding racing simulator. Stock the 4770K looks quite slow, it has to be said, though overclocked it is able to match the Core i5-8400, as performance is boosted by around 17%. As a result, the 8700K was just 8% faster for the minimum frame rate in what was a very mild gain. Next up we have Rainbow Six Siege, and while this is a CPU intensive game, a quad core with 8 threads is more than enough, as demonstrated by the Core i7-4770K. Out of the box it was comparable to the 7600K, while it edged ahead once overclocked. The 8700K did offer 17% more performance when comparing the minimum frame rate, but with all CPUs pushing the GTX 1080 Ti to over 140 FPS at all times, I'm not sure how meaningful that increase is. Now for the last two games I've tested with being Total War Warhammer 2 and Call of Duty World War 2, we're going to look at the performance across three presets being Medium, High and Ultra with the GTX 1080 Ti just for something different. Starting with the medium results, we see something quite interesting. Although the average frame rate is very similar across the CPUs tested, the 1% low result does vary quite a bit. Even once overclocked, the 4770K trails the 7600K and is 22% slower than the 8700K. That said though, I have to point out once again that frame rates did remain well over 100 FPS at all times. 
Increasing the GPU load with the high quality preset, the overclock 4770K minimum result is just 14% lower than that of the 8700K. This margin would of course be reduced further at higher resolution such as 1440p. Speaking of which, let's simulate that in a way I suppose by using the ultra quality preset. Well, there you go. Playing with a GTX 1080 Ti at 1080p, this game is heavily GPU bound with the ultra quality settings. Remember, most games we've looked at so far were tested with the second highest quality preset enabled to try and reduce the GPU bottleneck, though I'm aware doing so comes with mixed blessings. Anyway, here we see virtually no difference in performance between any of the CPUs tested, whereas previously the overclock 4770K was as much as 22% slower than the 8700K. Before moving on, I thought I'd give you a look at the Vega 64 liquid cooled results for Warhammer 2. For those of you wondering, this GPU sits between the GTX 1080 and 1080 Ti in this title, using the high quality preset at 1080p. This has allowed the overclock 7700K to close in on the 8700K. The previous high quality test with the GTX 1080 Ti saw the Haswell CPU trail by a 14% margin. Now with Vega 64, it's just 10% slower. Now the last game I'll be testing with is Call of Duty World War 2 and again let's check three quality levels, normal, high and extra. Starting with normal we find that even when overclocked the 4770K trails the 7600K. In fact overclocked the older Core i7 processor's average frame rate was boosted by just 10%. As a result this meant it was a little over 20% slower than the 8700K but again with well over 100 FPS at all times the margin probably doesn't mean that much. Increasing the quality preset to high doesn't change the margins much, and here the 4770K is still allowed for well over 100 FPS at all times, at least once overclocked. Even with the extra quality settings enabled, and those are the ultra or maximum type quality settings, the overclock 4770K was still 24% slower than the 8700K when comparing the average frame rate. The 4770K again looks to be bandwidth limited, as the 4.6GHz overclock did little to improve performance. Okay, so we've now looked at a heap of results. What's the verdict? Uh, okay, let's try and cover this from a few different angles. First angle of attack, head on. A simple no, it's not worth the upgrade. From a fourth gen Core i7 processor to the latest and greatest six core eighth gen Core i7s, we're not seeing scenarios where a hyper-threading enabled quad core can't deliver playable performance. In fact, we're not even seeing scenarios where it's even on the edge. For the most part, testing was conducted with the GeForce GTX 1080 Ti, which is currently the world's fastest gaming GPU. Testing also took place at 1080p, and for the most part, we weren't maxing out the visual quality settings. So in my opinion, these results really show a, I suppose, realistic worst case, if you will. Worst case would be a lower resolution with lower quality settings. So let's talk more realistic settings with the GTX 1080 Ti. For this, Ashes of the Singularity is a good example because it fully utilizes a six core 12 thread processor and therefore the 8700K was quite a bit faster than even the 4770K, even with the old fourth gen Core i7 overclocked. The average frame rate was almost 33% greater. That's an incredible difference and honestly more than I was expecting to see. Using the same GPU, but now with the extreme quality preset, reduces the 33% margin seen previously to just 17%, as we're now more limited by the GTX 1080 Ti. But that's not even the highest visual quality preset. Let's see how things look with the crazy preset. Thanks to the game's ability to really take full advantage of higher end CPUs, the 8700K still comes out on top here, but it is now just 9% faster. This really is a best case result for the 8700K as most titles would see no difference in performance when using maximum quality settings. Take Total War Warhammer 2 for example, using the ultra quality preset completely neutralized the playing field. So while it's easy to get caught up in the CPU limited benchmarks because they do look the most impressive, you do see the largest margins there. For the most part, the reality for gamers will be far more GPU limited. Remember, we are still using a GTX 1080 Ti, so even if you're the kind of gamer that will turn the quality settings down a little bit to boost GPU performance, doing so with something like a GTX 1070 will still result in a GPU limited scenario. That is assuming that you don't go excessively low on the quality settings. For example, I went back and tested Battlefield 1 using the GTX 1070 and compared the results to the GTX 1080 Ti using both the medium and ultra quality presets. At the top of the graph, you can see both CPUs compared with the GTX 1080 Ti using the medium quality settings and here the 8700K is 23% faster on average and 19% faster for the 1% low result. 
swapping to the GTX 1070, and now the 8700K is just 1% faster on average and 10% faster for the 1% low, but again, we're only using the medium quality settings. Increasing visual quality with the Ultra preset and therefore GPU load, the 8700K is now just 16% faster on average with the 1080Ti and 19% faster for the 1% low. Now the really telling result can be seen when using the ultra quality preset with the GTX 1070. Now there is no distinguishing between the 8700K and the 4770K. In fact, you'd likely get the same results without even overclocking the 4th gen Core i7 processor. As a side note to all of this, you can of course overclock the 8700K for even greater performance when not GPU bound. Though as I've noticed, gamers are almost always GPU bound with higher end Core i7 CPUs. So I hope that addresses why I haven't complicated things by also overclocking the 8700K. So to reiterate, I don't think the upgrade from either the 4770K or the 4790K to the 8700K, it's a lot of Ks, is going to be worth it. For the most part, gamers won't even notice the difference. Although decent gains were at times seen with the GTX 1080 Ti, you do have to be playing at 1080p and you can't be upscaling or making heavy use of anti-aliasing, for example. Meanwhile, if you're spending $700 US on a graphics card, buying a new CPU motherboard and memory combo isn't something you're gonna think twice about anyway. I suspect most gamers will be using something more like a GTX 1070, and as we just saw, the circumstances where the 8700K will offer any kind of gain is rare. Now, just lastly, what about those with a Core i5, 4670K or 4690K? What should they do? Buy a secondhand Core i7 or upgrade to the entire platform and go with a Coffee Lake CPU, assuming you could buy one at or near the MSRP. Personally, I'd look for a secondhand Core i7 processor. They're currently selling for between $150 and $200 US on eBay, with buy now auctions priced between $220 and $250 US. Given that the 8700K features an MSRP of $360 US, it's certainly a much more costly endeavor, assuming that you could even buy one for that price. And then, of course, you do have to also buy a Z370 motherboard and DDR4 memory, which is also not very cheap right now. The upgrade to the Ryzen 5 1600 is certainly much more cost effective, but even so, you're not really gaining anything when coming, especially from a 4th gen Core i7, at least not right now anyway. It will be likely a few years before the true value of these 6-core 12-thread CPUs will be realised, at least for gaming. On that note, if you do anything else with your PC other than gaming, as in productivity type work, maybe video encoding for example, then the Ryzen 5 1600 would very much be a worthwhile upgrade, or perhaps even the Ryzen 7 1700. Anyway, that's not really what this video is about. The focus was on gaming, and I think we covered everything. So with that, I'm going to go on and get out of here. On a final note, though, a big thank you to Storyblocks for supporting our work. Please check them out in the link in the video description below. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time, guys.